Pokemon Eternal X is an absolute roller coaster of a ROM hack that throws all sorts of things at the player. This is Bufflesaf's first enhancement hack, and it has a few different iterations and difficulty settings. For this playthrough, I'll be playing the hardest setting, Insanity Mode, and of course, we'll be playing with hardcore Nuzlocke rules along with some additional restrictions. These include the banning of EVs or effort values, setup moves, Encore, Substitute, and the implementation of additional level caps for certain boss fights. The starter choice in Eternal X is pretty simple. Froki with Protean is very strong into the early game, and Greninja becomes a monster later on with all the coverage it will get access to. You get chances at the other starters in the late game, and the Froki line is the most IV dependent, so being able to reset for a good one makes this a fairly obvious pick. Our first encounter is a guaranteed speed boost Torchic, which holds a Blaziken-ite. This is pretty insane, and Mega Blaziken is going to do a lot of work for us later on. Sandaloon Forest blesses us with a Technician Shroomish, which is another nice encounter for the early game. It packs some great utility, and strong priority mock punches when it evolves. Next, Litleo joins the team, packing the ability competitive to punish any debuffing shenanigans. It's got a good special attack stat at this point in the game, so it's not bad. All right, let's get straight into some action. Frogadier can 6-0 the first gym with some good RNG, and otherwise this fight would be a huge issue. There's no real counterplay to the hazards and status on Viola's team at this point in the game, and being able to abuse Protean is vital to keeping Frogadier healthy. Luckily, the RNG gods bless me, and I'm able to pull off the clean sweep to win the first batch. Our next encounter is on Route 4, where I catch Ledibo. This evolves into a buffed Aerolate packing Ledian. With a return TM soon to be in my possession, we will have access to an effectively 130 base power stab move with zero drawbacks. You'll see later on, but this guy is going to go to a lot of fights. It's easily the best encounter on this route and an absolute powerhouse. In Lumio City, there's a triple battle with Professor Sycamore that, upon victory, gives the player their choice of a Kanto starter. I choose Bulbasaur for the utility, bulk, and good matchups into some key fights later on. Route 5 gives me a Furf route, which is alright. It's tanky in the early game, but will fall off a cliff later. On Route 6, I grab Venipede, which will later evolve into Scolipede with speed boost. It's fine, but getting jumped here kind of sucks since there is some other good stuff in the grass. Our first true run killer lies on Route 7, where a tag battle awaits. The player is paired with Serena, and the two of you fight Trevor and Tierno. Their team is perfectly designed to steamroll the player, as Serena's Pokemon are incredibly frail and usually get kills baited into them. There's also a demonic Farfetch'd, which holds a stick that doubles its critical hit ratio. With a plethora of high crit moves and super luck, this thing is an absolute crit machine. In attempt 7, it crit me 6 times in one fight. This attempt, however, I have a trick up my sleeve. A ladybug that can tear most of this fight apart by simply clicking return. In fact, it's one of the only things in the early game that can outspeed an Oko the Farfetch'd, making this fight significantly easier. After a lot of frustration in earlier runs, it's nice that it's easy for once. In Connecting Cave, I grab Aeron, which is a solid get. Then, on Route 8, I use Honey to get the 60% Chimchar Horde. It seems redundant to have both Infernape and Blaziken, but as you'll see, these Pokemon have tools that differentiate them pretty significantly. I backtrack to Route 3, which I delayed specifically to Fish, and my weight pays off as I get the Elusive Magikarp. This gives me a really good chance of getting Feebas and Parfum Palace, which I also get. Milotic in this game has the Water Fairy typing, which is excellent on its own. Pair that with Insane Special Bulk and the ability Multiscale, and we have a fair and balanced Pokemon in our hands. I take a trek out into the desert and end up with a nice consolation prize. Larvesta is great as always when it evolves into Volcarona, but it'll be in the box for a while. The Silage City Gym is the next roadblock in the Eternal X early game. Brant is a rock type gym leader and runs a double sand team. Brant opens with Gigalith and Solrock, setting sand and having the potential to set screens as well. I lead with Milotic and Frogadier, and I waste no time getting a fast rain dance up and getting rid of the Solrock with a water pulse. 
Pseudo Ludo is baited in next, and I can take two kills here with Frogadier out beating the Gigalith after an Autotomize and Milota killing Pseudo Ludo. Aerodactyl and Cradley come out next, and I bring in Steelix and Bassidon and begin a cycle of pivoting around, baiting moves, and timely protecting to wear both of them down. Aerodactyl's Sky Attack is super exploitable, as you can often get the AI to click it and lock into a two turn move. Breloom helps out too, and eventually gets the kill on Aerodactyl with a hard mock punch after some help from Bastiodon. Relicanth is Grant's last Pokemon, and I hit it hard with a Mega Drain to 1 HP, living because of Sturdy, which I did totally forget that it had in this game. This causes an inadvertent crit dodge, thankfully Breloom holds, and I can kill Relicanth with a mock punch, and then 2v1 Cradley for the win. Not bad. There's a Serena fight on the way to Corinna, but honestly it's not super important and we'll be seeing each other again. The next big fight is the third badge, Corinna. She uses fighting types and has some formidable Pokemon on her team, including a Life Orb Terrakion on the third gym. Yeah, this game is going to get pretty crazy. I'll get into it later, but Insanity Mode is partially balanced around the player and the AI using high-powered legendaries, so stuff that would normally be on a ban list is absolutely on the table for this run. Rinna also packs a Mega Lucario as her ace, so she'll be the first Mega Evolution of the run as well, not to mention other threats such as a Flying Gem Unburdened Halucha. Pangoro with Power Up Punch, Gallade, and Focus Sash Breloom. Corinna leads with her Breloom, which gets two hit KO'd by Venoshocks from Venusaur. This baits in the Gallade, so I pivot Bastidon on the 50 50 Bulk Up or Ice Punch and bait Drade Punch into Ledian, which we still took comfortably at plus one. Gallade's Paper Defense also means that Aerial 8 Return still one shots at plus one. Long live the Ladybug. Terrakion is out next, and I hard switch to Celix, who's holding a Chobbleberry to take the incoming Sacred Sword after switching in on a Stone Edge. I get crit, but it doesn't matter, and I can kill Terrakion with a Gyro Ball after Life Orb Chip. This baits in Halucha, who I 1v1 with Slowbro. The key to this is coming in on a weak Drain Punch and then disabling Acrobatics after the Flying Gem is activated. Then I can safely slack off and wear it down. I switch Bastidon into Pangoro's Sucker Punch, causing it to fail. Ledian can come in on a power-up punch and then one-shot it with Return. This baits out the Mega Lucario, since Megas always come out last, and I don't really have a great counter to it. So I have a pretty scuffed 1v1 with Blaziken, but luckily we hold and take it out. Third gym badge, Deathless, not too shabby. There's another battle with Serena before Gym 4, and this one is a little more interesting than the last one, so we'll get into it. Serena leads with Meowstic, which is quite bulky, and takes two hits to kill with Night Slash from Greninja. It sets up a light screen in the process, but we've planned around it, so that's not a big deal. I can sit on Chestnut with Venusaur to help solve the screens out and eventually kill it with Venoshock. This baits in Kangaskhan, who I 1v1 with Chilinberry, Shell Armor Samurott, which kills the Kangaskhan with a boosted revenge. Dragonair gets beaten by Mr. Mon, and the final Pokemon, Vaporeon, gets beaten by Milotic in a war of attrition. Gym 4 is another run killer. Ramos is the grass type leader, and his gym is my personal favorite format, a rotation battle. For those who don't know, rotation battles have some of the most uncharacteristic, unpredictable AI of any battle format. The logic in which Pokemon are rotated in is totally random, meaning that you have to try and predict what is going to be in front of you at any given moment. This creates a huge RNG check, and with a full team of threats, it turns Ramos into a giant run killer. I think this fight would be pretty difficult if it was a single battle, so the fact that it's a rotation battle makes it just terrifying. Ramos has a Ferrothorn, a Substitute, Contrary, Draco Meteor, Leaf Storm, Superior, a Swift Swim Ludicolo with Rain Dance and a Focus Sash, Torterra with a Cobra Berry, Mega Venusaur, and last, but certainly not least, Shaman Sky, which outspeeds and flinches everything. I lost to this fight multiple times just because of how inconsistent it was. So let's see if we can get lucky this time around. Turn one, I protect and Mega Evolve Blaziken to get a speed boost. I do plan to set up the sun at some point, but I'm opportunistic. And I know from past experience that having Blaziken already Mega Evolved is ideal when the sun is up. Turn two, I hit a pretty hard fire punch as the superior substitutes, which is absolutely terrifying. I click Fire Punch again, and Ferrothorn rotates in, but it gets me a free kill. Not bad. Ludicolo comes out, and I'm anticipating some scariness, but the next turn goes very well, as Superior misses Draco Meteor, and I can break its sub with Ledian. I misclick and Mock Punch next turn, but at least I can break Ludi's Focus Sash. Of course, I am punished though, with Ludi setting up Rain Dance and getting Swift Swim online. 
I decide now is the time to make a mogul move, so I go into Pyroar hoping for a rotation to get the sun up. My gamble pays off, and Pyroar gets the sunny day off on Venusaur, which puts it to sleep after, but that's not a big deal. I bring Blaziken back in to go to work and hit Venusaur hard as it unleashes a sludge bomb that of course gets the poison. This was a huge misplay though as going for a return on Ledian would have been a free click. I would have killed everything. I can kill Venusaur the next turn but Ledian baits out the Torterra who is of course holding a Koba Berry to stop any potential carnage. It also has Stone Edge so a bad prediction here is very costly. Thankfully I predict right and can frag Ludicolo. Shaman Sky is out next and this demon immediately outspeeds and flinches Ledian, who I switch out for the bulkier Snorlax. In typical rotation battle fashion, Torterra comes in and whacks me with a wood hammer, which does a lot. Superior rotates in and then goes for synthesis as I click body slam, which does less than half. We're in a bad spot and it's not getting any better as Torterra comes back in and kills Snorlax with wood hammer. Now the sun is gone and I really didn't do much with it. I have Scolipede out to speed boost, but of course Storterra stays in on an incoming poison jab. Skyman takes a nice chunk before killing Scolipede and I can bring Venusaur in to try and finish the job. I eat a Seed Flare and kill with Venishaw, so now I just have to 1v1 the Superior with minus 2 special defense. Thankfully, it misses again, and I get the kill. If it hadn't, I would have 100% had to dodge a crit. Blaziken can then rotate back in and kill Torterra, because remember, you don't take poison damage if you end the fight, and that KO wins us our fourth gym badge. A stupid and unbalanced fight in the most ugly and gut-wrenching way possible, really. Before fighting Clement, the player goes to the power plant for the first true Team Flare gauntlet of the run. This concludes with battling Aliana, one of the Team Flare admins. Aliana opens with Metagross, who is immediately outsped in one shot by Pyroar. The Life Orb Sheer Force Drodagon is baited in next, and I bring Milotic in to take the superpower. I wither it down, but try to stay healthy in the process, and eventually I can kill Drodagon. Arcanine is out next, and this calls for a swap into Nidoqueen on Wild Charge. I eat a Fire Blast and retaliate with my own Life Orb Sheer Force boosted Earth Power to take it out. This brings out Aliana's scary ace, Volcanion, who holds an air balloon. Volcanion goes for a steam eruption on my Gyarados switch in, which gets the burn. A hell lumberry shrugs it off, but it means we run the risk of getting will-o'-wisped. I go for a crunch to pop the air balloon, and it goes for fire blast, which is the best case scenario here. I bulldoze, and then get wisped, crippling my Gyarados. Luckily for me, I have a healthy Milotic sitting in the back, which was kept at near full HP for this reason. It can come in and finish the 1v1. Aliana's scary Argyops enters the battle, and this monster has the ability Clutch instead of Defeatist, which paired with Acrobatics means that despite no held item, it is very threatening. However, this monster is checked by Steelix, who retaliates with a brutal Gyro Ball, eliminating Archaeops. Aliana's Mega Heracross is out next, and Ledian can come in, shrug off the 5 hit skill link arm thrust, and one shot it with a return, winning us the fight and liberating the Kalos power plant. This brings us to Clemont, the electric type gym leader, who we fight in our first triple battle of the run. His team features a ton of discharge spam, paired with immunity abilities to either heal or boost his team. By spamming discharge, Clemont can also spread a ton of paralysis. Clemont opens with Lantern, Raichu, and Electivire. I get things rolling with Mr. Mime, a pre-damaged Gyarados, and Excadrill. I protect Gyarados, drawing in electric moves, as Excadrill is of course immune, and Mime can take a soft discharge with its respectable special bulk. I do get paralyzed, but a held cherry berry keeps me healthy. I lose a speed tie to Electivire and take another discharge and, well, get paralyzed again. But I do dodge the full paralysis and kill it with a super effective psychic. Excadrill then lets off a massive earthquake, killing Lantern and getting Raichu very low after eating its Shuga Berry. This baits in Stunfisk and Thunderous Sea, which is a terrifying combo. I bring in Breloom, Bastidon, and Nidoqueen to reposition. Bastidon takes a crit into double target and gets hit pretty low as Breloom takes a nasty earth power. This is not a great spot to be in, and now Raichu is at plus 2, so I protect Bastidon and draw in two Focus Blasts, giving me a free shot to kill Raichu with earth power. Breloom lets off a strong seed bomb, chunking Stunfisk and procking its berry. Mega Ampharos is out next, and this is terrifying with Mold Breaker and Monstrous Special Attack. I stay aggressive and bring Mr. Mime into Bastidon's slot for a potential sacrifice. Focus Blast from Thunderous misses Mr. Mime as Nidoqueen lets off a massive Earth Power. Breloom gets rid of Stunfisk, but Ampharos saw kills on both Breloom and Bastidon, so unfortunately we lose the 50-50 and Breloom in the process. I now have a 3v2 and can clean up using Exadrill and Nidoqueen to beat Ampharos and Thunderous, winning us badge number 5. 
Shortly after is Jim Six, the fairy type specialist, Valerie. By the standards of this game, this is actually a pretty tame fight. I open with Pyroar, as Valerie's cleft key sets up spikes, it dies to Flamethrower. Grand Bull is out next, and I pivot through Volcarona into Ledian to set up kills on Grand Bull and Miss Magius. Sylveon is out next, which gets beat pretty easily by Exodro. Venusaur and Nidoqueen can tag team Azumarill and set up for a Nidoqueen kill on Mega Mawile, winning us badge 6. The next team flare split takes us to the Kalos Pokeball Factory, where one of the scariest fights in the game awaits. Like many other ROM hacks, such as Renegade Platinum, Eternal X has a 12v12 tag battle with a ridiculous roster of Pokemon. On one side, Solosia's team has a Dewblade, Hydreigon, Magmortar, Toxicroak, Drapion, and Mega Manectric. And on the other side, well, it's even scarier, as Briony has a Darkrai, Life Orb Haxorus, Chandelure, Luxray, a Defiant, Air Balloon Bisharp, and of course, Mega Pinsir with Aerialite. Combine that with unpredictable partner AI, and this fight can be absolutely terrifying. Team Flare comes out swinging, leading with No Guard Dewblade and Darkrai. Turn 1, I Mega Evolve and protect for a speed boost. Meowstic gets doubled into and immediately dies. This brings in Dragonair from Serena, and now the chicken can go to work. The first order of business is to eliminate Darkrai, which dies to a double kick to play around the Focus Sash. Dragon Rush does nothing to Dewblade as it hits a soft Shadow Claw into my chicken. Haxorus comes out next, seeing a kill on Dragonair, so I'm free to Fire Blast for the KO. Remember, no guard means that all attacks hit the no guard Pokemon as well, so we don't have to worry about missing here. Then Dragonair dies. Next turn, Drapion comes out, and I protect the chicken as Vaporeon lets off a massive blizzard. I then switch into Milodic as the Vaporeon gets hit hard. After leftovers, Multiscale is back online, so I attack Drapion and get rid of it. Toxicroak comes out now, and I protect as Vaporeon gets absolutely fragged. I bring in Steelix next turn as Serena brings out her Clefable. With two poison moves coming into the Steelix slot, Clef gets a free kill on Haxorus. Bisharp is baited out next, and Clef dies as I hit a hard earthquake into Toxicroak. This doesn't hit Bisharp because of the air balloon though. I switch Milotic in on an incoming heat wave, but Chestnut lets off a massive drain punch to Oko Bisharp, getting all of its health back. Next turn, the AI pulls out some tech and Will-O-Wisps its own Chandelure to power up Flashfire. The ensuing Heat Wave brings Chestnut to 5 HP, but a Surf from Milo decimates it and brings the two Fire types low. Mega Kangaskhan hits the field on Serena's side, hitting Magmortar with a nasty crunch, and Chandelure then protects itself from the Surf. Hydreigon comes out next, and this is really the freest Moonblast click of my life as Chandelure gets dropped by another crunch. It does have a Rosalie Berry though, so it lives. Luxray comes out, and I hard switch to Nidoqueen as Hydreigon finally dies. Mega Manectric is Solosia's last Pokemon, and it enters the fight. Manectric sets up Light Screen as Kanga goes for another crunch. Luxray hits a pretty hard Ice Fang, but Earth Power from Nidoqueen blasts Manectric through the screens. We're now in a 2v1, so the home stretch is here. I kill Luxray, then throw three Mons at the Mega Pinsir and dodge a crit, winning us one of the hardest fights in the game. Pretty insane to do this deathless. There's a bit of time before the next gym, so let's recap. We head to Frost Cavern, where we catch our first legendary of the run, Kiram. This thing will warm the box for the rest of the game. At the bottom of Frost Cavern, I encounter Mabel, another Team Flare admin who I fight for the first time, and she gets beaten pretty handily. For the Anastar City gym, there's also a fight with Serena, who I didn't plan super well for, but ended up steering past with no deaths. This leaves us at the seventh gym leader, Olympia, who uses psychic types and is another rotation battle. She packs a nasty team with Rock Polish Metagross, Claydol, Magic Guard Sigilyph, Latias, Mega Metachamp, and a Deoxys attack. Yeah, this is going to be another rough one. Olympia leads with Claydol, Deoxys, and Sigilyph. I open with Politoed, Miss Magius, and Miss Cavalier. Setting rain here is nice since it means that S. Cavalier can live a non-crit Deoxys Fire Punch. Turn 1, Miss Magius hits a hard Life Orb boosted Shadow Ball into Claydol, who calm mines up. It stays in on turn 2 and then dies, so that's a good start. Miss Magius rotates out, and then Metagross comes into the Claydol slot and hits a soft Meteor Mash into S. Cavalier, but does get the attack boost. Leech Life heals some back, but I'm in a bad spot. It goes for EQ now, which does a ton, knocking S Cavalier into Swarm range and getting us some of our health back. I go to Miss Magius here, knowing I need to keep tempo and take care of Metagross with a hard Shadow Ball. Ladias goes for Calm Mind on entry, and S Cavalier hits another massive Leech Life to take care of business and heal immensely. Metacham is out next, and this thing is terrifying. I stay in on the face of Doom as it Mega Evolves and hits a hard Drain Punch. Leech Life, however, keeps me healthy as always, and I decide to rotate 
rotate Miss Magius back in to hit a hard Shadow Ball into Sigilyph, and it gets a clean one shot. Deoxys and Metacham are now the only two out, but Rain finally stops. Of course, the next turn, Deoxys rotates in and fire punches as Cavalier, marking death number four of our run. This guy was not with us for very long, but he was helpful for this fight. Rest in peace, Cockwanker. Atro can come in and clean up from here, getting rid of Deoxys and Metacham with Sucker Punches and winning us badge seven. In between now and Gym 8, there's a ton of fights and a huge level jump. The Team Flare hideouts are the most grueling gauntlets in the game, and we get started immediately with the first of three Lysander fights, although I'll skip over the first two since they are mostly the same. Once we get deeper into the hideout, we rematch all the admins. First, Aliana. I open with an overheating chicken, with accuracy assisted by a wide lens. Once Metagross goes down, Volcanion comes in, who is toxic salt by water absorbed Jellicent. Hotchcrow beats Golurk, Milo beats Drodagon. A pivot through Cofagrigus sets up two kills back to back with my Refrigerate Delibird, using E-Speed for Archaeops and drill peg for Heracross. This brings us to yet another scary run killer featuring Celosia and Briony. If you were curious as to how Buffle topped the 12v12, well here we are. This is a 6v12, back to back with no healing. They run mostly the same teams as the 12v12 with a few exceptions, but obviously no healing makes this incredibly difficult. Celosia opens up with Scope Lens Sniper Drapion as I lead with Lucaria. I Mega Evolve and hit it low with an Aura Sphere, but Drapion attacks turn 1, which is a little unfortunate considering it had a good chance to Sword Stance there. Anyways, I take kill on Drapion, Hydreigon, and Magmortar. Toxicroak is the fourth Pokemon out, and I bring in Jellicent on Cross Chop to bait a Sucker Punch into Infernape. This sets up a kill with Flying Gem Boosted Acrobatics and baits an Aegislash, which is always difficult to deal with. Thankfully, my plus special attack nature means that I can blast it with a 90% accurate overheat that eventually connects after it spams King's Shield. There's never a riskless fight with me, is there? Anyways, Nidoqueen can come in on Mega Manectric and 1v1 it with relative ease. Briony is the harder of the two admins, and she gets things rolling with Darkrai. I Mega Evolve, but I need to click Protect here due to a bug in the Gen 6 engine. This game does not have dynamic speed, meaning that on turn 1, even if I Mega Evolve, my Lucario will still have its base form speed stat. To circumvent this, I Protect after Mega Evolving to get through turn 1, and let the game update my Lucario's speed stat so that I can outspeed Darkrai. On turn 2, I decimate it with a powerful Aura Sphere. I go hard into Starmie on Chandelure, taking a ton from a resisted Fire Blast, then I kill with Surf. Sheer Force Nidoqueen beats Raikou and baits in the terrifying Focus Sash Haxorus. Two of the last three Pokemon on this team involve the biggest risks of the back-to-back. -back. I switch into Jellicent to take an EQ, then bait Outrage into Ms. Magius, which baits Iron Tail into Inferni. Infernape can fake out, break the Sash, and switch into Ms. Magius on Earthquake, which hits Ms. Magius because of Mold Breaker, so I have to dodge the crit and then eventually kill. Bisharp comes in next, and I go back to Infernape and kill with Rock Smash. This baits in Mega Pinsir, but because the AI does not see Aerial 8 turn 1, I am not dead to Quick Attack and therefore can outspeed and hit another 90% accurate overheat to win the 6 v 12. Another riskless fight. It's too free for the goats. Mabel is the next admin up in the HQ and we're in for a treat with her. Mabel leads with an Infernape holding a Focus Sash, so I beat it with my own monkey and hit the Fake Out into Acrobatics combo to take care of it. Miss Magius comes in on Earthquake from Electivire and KOs with Moonblast. This brings in Caracosta, who sets up Shell Smash, but it can't really touch Shell Armor Samurott, which can beat it pretty easily with a Grass Knot into Aqua Jet. Weavile comes out next, so I go to the Chicken, protect for a speed boost, and take two kills on it and the incoming Dug Trio. This Dug Trio tries to set up Memento into a sunny day for Mega Houndoom, so that's pretty good to get rid of. Greninja switches in after Dugtrio dies and beats Mega Houndoom, resulting in a pretty clean fight. The final admin fight is with Zerosic, and look at this guy, man. What the hell did they do to him? Anywho, he opens with Crobat, so I can counter with the goat, who kills with a Refrigerate Extreme Speed. This baits in the Choice Scarf Sheer Force Darmanitan, who I have to 1v1 with Slowbro. I take a ton from Resisted Flare Blitz and then protect for some lefties. I disable and cause it to struggle as I get Slowbro healthy again and then KO. This baits in the Download Assault Vest Genesect, so I go to Chicken on Thunderbolt, which I narrowly lived a crit from. Then I speed boost and KO. Malamar comes in next and gets beat by Miss Magius. Gengar loses to Honchkro and Mega Scizor gets beat by Infernape. After beating Zerosic, some giant shit pops out of the ground and we head back over to Geosenge to clear out Team Flare once and for all. Before we face off with Lysander for the last time, we can catch Xerneas, although it's very underleveled, so it wouldn't do much for this fight. Lysander kicks things off with Evil Tall, which is insanely hard to counter. Thankfully, I have the GOAT. 
who could have used recovery and multi-scale to toxic stall it. After several minutes of stalling, the big bird finally goes down. I go to Lucario on Poison Jab from Yin Xiao, I Mega, then Protect to bypass the lack of dynamic speed mentioned earlier. It dies to Aura Sphere and Garchomp comes in next. I go to Miss Magius on an Earthquake and kill with Life Orb Moonblast. Heatran is 1v1'd by Jellicent and I laughed in the face of Volcarona's Quiver Dance with Bastidon, taking the kill with a Rock-type Strength. I bring Slowbro in on Earthquake from Mega Gyarados and then switch Mega Lucario back in on Crunch to take the kill and beat Lysander. We get things rolling in the next split with another legendary encounter. This time it's Latios, which is solid although not as good as you might think. It came to a few fights, uh, and well it's definitely not as bad as, as Kyurem though, that was terrible. You'd think that maybe we would get a break or something before the next gym, but no, this game keeps the intensity going with one of the most insane gauntlets I have ever seen. On Route 19 we have maybe the hardest fight in the entire game. If you thought the Team Flare stuff was crazy, there is a 6v18 on the Route 19 bridge. You fight Shauna, Tierno, and Trevor back to back, and the only only time you heal is between fights 2 and 3. The player brings the same party, same items, and same moves. Shauna leads with Sylveon, who is outsped and O-Code by Nidoqueen's Sheer Force boosted Poison Jab. I start Toxic stalling Lapras and then get frozen, but end up being able to kill. Now Gudra comes out and I pivot through Volcarona into Xerneas and then kill it with Moonblast. I soon realize that I prepped the wrong Shauna team when a Roserade shows up in front of me. This results in an incredibly impromptu cook session, and now I have to see if I can win with this scuffed ass team. I don't feel great about it, but there's still a ton of outs we can play into. On the plus side, this fight is the only one that I prepped the wrong version of, so I guess there's hope. After a few minutes of contemplating all my life choices, I switch Volcarona into a Sludge Bomb from Roserade, getting crit into Poison. A Held Lumberry takes care of the Poison, but getting crit is pretty tough here. I kill Roserade with Flamethrower, and then hard switch to Greninja on Delphox to kill it with Surf. Chinchino comes in next, and I bring Xerneas back in so I can click Aromatherapy and heal my loaded. Once that's done, I click Moonblast. Tierno is up next, and now my line to him is not looking great. Nidoqueen can one-shot the Talonflame with Strength. Greninja comes in on Ludicolo's Hydro Pump, and now I have to hit a buffed accuracy gunk shot. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, it misses, but because of Protean, I resist Giga Drain and can stay in to hit another one. Volcarona takes a nasty Earth Power on the switch and kills Lilligant with Flamethrower. Rodon comes in, and I have to kill it with Milotic. I eat a Jet, outspeed, and immediately begin to recover to try and get healthy. It sets up a sword dance but with multi-scale back online I can kill with Moonblast. My plan for Volcarona got screwed pretty badly in the last fight so I have to 1v1 it with Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen does hold but it dies to a flame body proc. Milotic can come back in and beat Kingdra winning us the fight against Tierno. We get healed and now it's time for the last fight of the gauntlet, Trevor. Trevor leads with Raichu and since my lead is dead I immediately switch into Milotic. I very safely use Milotic and Volcarona to Toxic Stall Raichu which was super safe and riskless. Frostlass comes out next and I set up Stealth Rocks and Toxic Stall that too with Bastidon. I'm able to get Greninja in on the Frostlass setting up a kill chain if things go my way. I then kill it. Prelum, Aerodactyl, Florges, and Bastidon, winning me the 6v18 in lovely fashion. On the way to Wolfric, I grab Zapdos in the Pokemon Village, and actually useful Legendary. The 8th and final gym battle is the Ice-type leader Wolfric. This is a triple battle, but with newfound access to choice items and more encounters, this fight is pretty easy. Wolfric leads with Frostlass, Jinx, and Aurorus to set hail. I open with Greninja, Lucario, and Xerneas. Aurorus protects, Lucario bullet punches Jinx, and Choice Band Faint Attack Greninja kills Frostlass. Lapras and Kyurem White are baited in next, and I switch Greninja into Delphox, protect Lucario, and kill Kyurem with Moonblast. Mega Obama Snow occupies the middle slot now, and I totally misplay and double protect Lucario, which thankfully I get, but I was supposed to switch there. I protect Delphox and Thunderbolt Lapras, and then the next turn I take three kills and win the fight. That was unnecessarily risky, and I'm kind of not sure why I misclicked there, but you know, charge it to the game, I guess. Before Victory Road, I pick up Evil Tall, which is another fair and balanced button clicking legendary. Victory Road is now upon us, sporting some of the hardest trainers in the game. After entering, I run into a horde of Dano as my final encounter. You can get some really good legendaries here with the correct dupes, but I opted not to since I didn't have them. Victory Road also features some of the toughest optionals and trainer battles in the game, usually sporting mega Pokemon and weird gimmicks. Our saving grace here is a nice level advantage, which lets us get through with relative ease and more importantly, no deaths. 
All that travel brings us to the Elite Four, and holy shit does this E4 have hands. Drasna has scary dragon types. Malva and Seabold run some of the most diabolical weather teams I have ever seen. Wickstrom is a rotation battle. <sighs> and Diantha has a full Ubers team. Anyways, here's the squad for the final five fights. Xerneas and Eviltal are my aura boosting button clickers, mostly just here to click their aura boosted stab moves. But Xerneas, Xerneas also has some tech to be fair, but they're shoo-ins for any E4 team in this game and both very fair and balanced. Tyranitar and Excadrill are here for weather dominance. Sandstream and Sand Rush is a lethal combo, and this E4 is a big chunk of the reason why I even allowed weather. My Excadrill has incredible IVs, and paired with Sand support from Tyranitar, it's an absolute cleaner. Zapdos has some good use on Seabold, but is probably the most expendable member of the entire team. It has pivoting and utility in the other fights, but that's about it. My last team member is Mega Lucario, who can do some really great work on Diantha and Wickstrom. With a better speed tier and adaptability, it matches up really well. I decide to fight Drasna and her team of dragons first, as she is my safest matchup. I lead with a pre-damaged Evil Tall to lock High Dragon into Dragon Pulse and switch into Tyranitar, who can shrug it off pretty easily with the Sand Special Defense boost. I set up Stealth Rocks, stall out my own Sandstorm, and bring in Xerneas. With a Choice Scarf equipped, I click Moonblast and sweep Drasna's entire team. Seabold is up next, and this is a pretty daunting Rain Team triple battle. I lead with Zapdos, Xerneas, and Tyranitar, and Seabold opens with Kyogre in the middle and two Swift Swimmers in Kingdra and Ludicolo. Tyranitar underspeeds Kyogre so I can win the Weather War off the bat, but Seabold can reset it so we need to keep that in mind with our planning. Xerneas lets off a nasty Thunderbolt into Kyogre as it tries to reset rain. Tyranitar can eat a Flash Cannon from Kingdra. Zapdos hits another Thunderbolt to take care of Ogre as Ludi tries to set up rain as well, but it fails ultimately. This lets Tyranitar then set up Sun. Palkia will assume the middle slot, but this is Xerneas fodder. I drill pack Ludicolo, Moonblast Palkia, and switch Evil Tall into the Tyranitar slot. Ludi sets rain back up, and Gastrodon comes into the middle slot. Tyranitar resets sand on the next turn and takes Kingdra's Surf well with Sand and a Health Pasho Berry. Ludi and Kingdra go down this turn and Mega Blastoise comes in last. I protect Tyranitar and Horn Leech Gastrodon for recovery. I bring Eviltal into the right slot, kill Gastrodon, and then 3v1 Blastoise. Easy enough. Malva is the second iteration of Weather Wars, but this doubles fight is a lot more exploitable. Malva leads with Reshiram and Ninetales as I lead with Excadrill and Tyranitar. Tyranitar also underspeeds Ninetales, so we get Sand up and go to absolute work with Excadrill. This of course makes Excadrill the fastest Pokemon on the field. And a Life Orb boosted Earthquake combined with my perfect attack IV decimates both Ninetales and Reshiram. And I switch Evil Tall into my Tyranitar slot so I can continue the carnage. Ho-Oh and Chandelure come out, so it's time for Rock Slide Spam. And this is the one Rock Slide I do have to hit. And and it connects. Evil Tall has a wide lens, so we're 99% accurate and both connect as well. I was admittedly a little less worried about that one, but obviously the double rock slide was risky. Heatran and Charizard get clean the next turn, and that's Malva swept with three Pokemon. Nice. Wickstrom's rotation battle is the bane of my existence. He's got a Prankster Klefki lead, Dialga, Mega Agron, Aegislash, Agility Empoleon, and Ferrothorn. I open up with Excadrill, Zapdos, and Lucario. I go for an Iron Head into Klefki and immediately get punished as Ferrothorn comes in and bulldozes, so we're not exactly off to a hot start. I rotate in Zapdos to Heat Wave, and of course Empoleon switches in and clicks Agility. I do get the burn though, and I stay in as it rotates into Ferrothorn that clicks Power Whip. I I guess, but we do proc static, so that's good. Ferrothorn gives me a free turn, and then staying in with Zapdos finally pays off as I can kill Empoleon. The big bad Dialga comes in for some more fun, and I realize I have a good matchup with Evil Tall here, so I sacrifice Zapdos, who I do not need for the champion. This gets me a free switch, and I bring in Mega Lucario to get Prankster swaggered, but I do hit through to kill Klefki. Aegislash is out next, so it's Evil Tall time, and Ferrothorn switches in and meets its doom. Wickstrom's last Pokemon is Mega Aggron, and I kind of have a free click on this thing with Dark Pulse, and then I absolutely mog Aegislash, which hits me with some, some weakness policy garbage, but uh, oh well, the big bird doesn't give a shit. I switch Tyranitar into a Flash Cannon from Dialga, setting up Sand for Excadrill to clean up, and dodging a crit in the process, but then Excadrill can sweep the rest of the fight under Sand. I love rotation battles. Now, it's time for the champ, Lovely. 
Diantha leads with a Choice Scarf Genesect, so a Tyranitar lead is good here for two reasons. First, we lock it into Iron Head and boost its special attack from download. Secondly, after Tyranitar dies, Extra Drill can come in and outspeed it to set up Stealth Rocks. Getting flinched on Tyranitar didn't really matter for that reason. Once Extra Drill goes down, I can bring in Mega Lucario to kill with Fire Punch. An untimely flinch does mean that it's not going to be able to do as much damage as intended, but it can still kill Genesect and the incoming Mega Blaziken. Because of the flinch, we are dead to Arceus E speed at minus one, so we can't kill that anymore. Thankfully, Xerneas can come in and 1v1 it with Choice Specs Moonblast as Zygarde comes in and drops to Moonblast as well after Stealth Rock's chip. Stealth Rocks breaks Voldy Scale on Lugia, and I'm clicking Moonblast until I get Whirlwinded out, which is exactly what happens. Lugia hits a Toxic, and then I take kills on it and Mega Mewtwo Y with Evil Tall, winning us the hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Eternal X's Insanity Mode. Overall, this game is a mixed bag to me. Some of the balancing is really questionable, and the difficulty variation in between certain splits was kind of puzzling. Some splits are super manageable, while others have an extreme amount of artificially inflated difficulty. The Team Flare gauntlets, for example, are way too tedious. With the buff teams, there's just too many trainers, and it does make these splits feel very tiring. There's also rotation battles, which every Nuzlocker hates with a fiery passion. Every single rotation battle in this game, I frauded. It was like, like the exact opposite of skill expression. I just balled unbelievably hard. The integration of legendaries also makes things a little awkward as it narrows down a lot of the matchup options without setup, EVs, and a corresponding amount of stat changes to make it work. To be fair, there, there, there are like a good amount of stat changes in this game, but I don't think that they are nearly as drastic as they would need to be to support stuff like third gym legendaries. The multi-battles were fun to plan for though, and I did get some good use out of what I caught. If I had to rate it, I'd give it a play this if you like wiping the rotation battles out of 10. Anywho, I'm live on on Twitch these days, so if you're interested, tune in and smash that like button. Jude out.